Paolo. Bienvenidos de vuelta. Welcome back. We will now have a session on the Frida Awards for 2021. Alicia Succhetti has the floor. Thank you, Sandra. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this instance. We'll be presenting the awards for Frida program for 2021. With us, we have Andres Aspurua, project leader Vecin Filtro, selected under the thematic category open and free internet in the subtopic data privacy and protection, Ricardo Guevara, leader of the pro pilot project on television white spaces in Montes de Maria, Colombia, selected under the category access to the internet and specifically with a subtopic alternative access models. And Carlos Valanquiñones, who will be with us remotely, leader of the program Rural and Community Internet selected under thematic category Internet Stability and Security and specific in the subtopic interconnection. Welcome, all of you. Thank you for accepting participating in this space. And to start, I would like to ask you to briefly tell us about the objectives of your projects, why you decided to embark on those projects. So first of all, I will give the floor to Andres and we'll continue with Ricardo and Carlos. The project Without Filters is one of the seeks to protect human rights and the internet and the digital ecosystem documenting with technical documents these facts. And who and then overcoming those who ignore these events. So we collect information regarding the violation of human rights. Most of all, we document censure of the censorship of the internet, which affects the media who do censorship to some of the news, we understand the patterns of this censorship and confuse, confusion, and we also document these facts, these events, in order to minimize the impact, and we give tools to the civil society and those organizations that have censored censorship. We also help with connectivity, and we document and to incidents response to IT attacks organized by the states to journalists, civil actors, and independent organizations, something as, as exotic as Man in the Middle and DNS servers to massively send these citizens to phishing websites. This has been done by the state, and we document all these attacks. The results of our research are always published and provide a technical outlook, but at the same time with a focus on human rights. Thank you, Andres. Ricardo. The pilot project on the White Spaces television for the Santa Maria area was focused on finding or trying to propose solutions to connectivity problems in the rural areas in our country. Halfway through the pandemic, we realized that there were serious connectivity problems that had to be overcome. This had a strong impact on different sectors of the economy and the society in Colombia. In that context, we decided to practice the applicability of technology that call, is called white, television white spaces. Based on that, we proposed a pilot project in order to, in three basic areas, test the response time that this offered. So based on that, we considered three axes, three functional axes. One is to verify the coexistence of white space television with the public television in our country. The second one was to verify the capacity of the technological performance provided by the response capacity. 
That had to do with providing this service. And the third element was an impact measurement in order to review the efficiency levels provided by technology to respond to day-to-day -to -day requirements of the smaller vulnerable populations located in Montes de Maria in Colombia. Carlos, could you comment on your project, please, and the justification and reasons why you developed this project? Good afternoon. In view of a need that we detected in the case of rural community internet, we conducted this project in the state of Yucatan and had to do with the lack of an internet provider. This was also in response to the educational reforms that the country was implementing. The idea was to provide technological materials to schools, but only in the, this was only being carried out in the urban areas. So in the rural areas, they lacked an internet service. The locality we worked with is about 150 kilometers away from the capital city. This was the reason why there was no provider as such. As a result of that need, we established the link and provided internet service to that community. And from then on, to redistribute it to the different communities of, uh, uh, with difficult access, not just the access to reach them because of, of the lack of, of of means, in this case, the lack of internet. That is how the initiative started in 2017 to provide connectivity to those schools. And with the pandemic, at the beginning, the schools used the service only for, uh, initially only for administrative things, but then with the pandemic, everything changed. And we saw the need to um, implement in those um, small or towns or rural areas several repetition points, the hotspots. And it's, it's been really very satisfactory to be able to reduce the digital divide in those uh, communities where there were no communications means and even worse during the pandemic. So these hotspots were very useful so that people could uh, contact us for medical problems uh, and also for teachers to coordinate with students and somehow to reduce the digital divide between the cities and uh, the towns uh, and uh, the, the marginal areas. Thank you, Carlos. And precisely um, with regard to this latter point that you described, uh, the results of the impact of the project that you mentioned, I'd like to hear about which do you consider that were the key results obtained uh, through the initiatives uh, that you um, developed? And I'd like to know whether those results continue to be visible. Well, the findings of uh, our work showed evidence of things that would never have been public, such as the participation of different public uh, agencies in um, cyber attacks. This would have been considered conspirational. Um, if we hadn't discovered that, uh, nobody would have believed it. And the findings, both censorship and uh, IT attacks, were also uh, reported by um, in the United Nations and uh, in human rights ad um, advocacy groups. The political cost and the reputational cost uh, of these massive attacks in the internet increased uh, thanks to our work, and we hope that this translates into a certain level 
of self-control by the government so as not to be discovered. In 2019, there were over 60 block blockades of the most important platforms. I'm speaking of uh, um, um, Facebook, YouTube, interface, um, um, Instagram, and the political cost of these uh, blockades was uh, significant. And the other impact is that now that they can't work uh, without uh, resistance and in silence, it's more difficult for them to operate because the civil society reacts with these attacks when they try to expose the dissidents or uh, uh, human rights uh, um, def um, advocacy groups. Because now the civil society is more empowered. Thank you, Ricardo. Well, for the case of the pilot project TWS in Montes de Maria, the results also basically have three aspects. The first of which is that thanks to this pilot group, we um, uh, checked uh, the possibility of coexistence of technology because the operators and the television providers in the country were reluctant to um, use the electromagnetic spectrum. And thanks to the pilot work, we checked, we verified that technology works and that it does not interfere or threaten the other services. This was verified by the television um, uh, um, people who also collaborated in the project. A second thing that we achieved was to measure performance in this pilot study. This technology offered very interesting uh, uh, levels of service with a performance much better of any technology available in the market today for the in the situations that they were exposed in a, a topology that is very difficult that is Monte de Maria offering levels of service in terms of speed and uh, latency that uh, are comparable to those provided by fiber optic. And the third element that is important is precisely the impact capacity, because this project applied especially in the educational area of the rural area in the municipality of Ovejas, with the eight public schools extremely vulnerable and having to face technical difficulties that were very, very important, and they received excellent quality internet services with very good performance, and it had an impact on 250 children that received class in the schools and more than 2,000 people uh, around those schools. Thank you. Carlos, could you elaborate on the results of the project vis-a-vis -vis what you mentioned about the digital divide? the reaction of uh, the digital divide. Yes, of course, as I mentioned earlier, first of all, uh, it was the schools that benefited, about 40 schools. And initially, they used the service only for administrative purposes. But then, with COVID-19, they benefited, uh, the students also benefited because the service was no longer used only for administrative uh, things, but they already used uh, the internet and the electronic equipment to broadcast uh, and to uh, send and uh, their, their homework, for instance. And the third is that the community benefited because not only did they receive the service to schools, but uh, they also put hotspots in uh, the middle of the towns or the villages. Thank you. And finally, I'd like you to briefly elaborate on why you decided initially at the time last year to uh, apply to the Frida Prize. What led you to uh, decide that? 
Well, I think that one of the aspects is to be able to have the recognition of the uh, internet technical community. Sometimes the aspects of certain countries are not reflected or not understood uh, and are not well distributed throughout the region. And additional funding is always helpful, cover the needs. And it provides you opportunities so that you can improve the capacity where you're working. And our work especially requires hardware connected to provide you connective uh, visibility. And that was significant, uh, very useful in our operations. In our case, we, think, we thought of this as an opportunity to visibilize the capability of a solution of a technology in the country validated from an operator or an international entity with the track record and the technical capacity and the knowledge and the worth of knowing and understanding the, the, the provision of internet service as LACNIC. So applying to the FIDA prize re implied Val an international validation vis-a-vis -vis a new disruptive technological model that had not been applied in Latin America and that actually represents an opportunity to solve this severe need in connectivity for in vulnerable communities. Carlos? Yes. We applied looking for an opportunity. We approached the director of the IXP node in Yucatan to seeking opportunities for funding precisely to be able to increase the bandwidth in uh, the, the districts where we were already providing the internet because during the pandemic they started using it more and with a greater consumption. So we tried to do that. And the director of this node, when I told her about the project, she said, well, what you're doing is very interesting in your community, in your area. And she gave me information. She said, well, we can't help you with funding, but I, I maybe I can uh, for, uh, refer you to carriers. And she was the one who inspired me to uh, apply to this initiative. So, and we are very grateful. It's not, not just as a person, but the entire uh, working team, but most of all, the people that are, the community that is uh, receiving the benefits. People are very grateful. Well, thank you. Thank you all for sharing your experiences with you and your projects. Once again, thank you. And we leave uh, the space to the rest of the program. Thank you. So we congratulate 